Welcome everyone to our top 10 mod showcase. This is where I present to you the list of the coolest and best mods you need to have for the month. We have the winners of every mod type that I could possibly find and cram in a list. From gorgeous hair mods, reworks, armor mod showcase, sexy new classes, and so much more. Before we start, I would love to have this opportunity to share a channel update. We just reached 400 subscribers after 2000 today and we're now 4% larger in terms of people subscribing in the show. So thank you so much everyone for the continued support. You guys are amazing and wonderful and for all the 96% who haven't subscribed yet, you are equally amazing and wonderful. So thank you so much for watching the show. But if you want to help our brother out, Please consider hitting that subscribe button, it really helps me out a ton. That being said, buckle up everyone and these are the top 10 mods for the month of March 2024. Enjoy! We're starting off the list with our hair mod of the month for number 10, which is Silver's Hair Pack 1 and 2. These two mods are made by the same mod creator that adds 11 new hair models for that type 1 and type 2 body presents. The hairstyles are really nice and provides wide variations for you to choose from. Each has its own distinct look. It works for elf, half elf, humans, and tiefling. Even though the tiefling versions need some work, with some horn clippings as well as some clothes and ears, hair models look amazing, colors and highlights are clearly visible, and meshes are really well made on most of the head models. Even though the hair physics sometimes look floaty if you look closely, it still looks impressive. It also comes with its own custom icons which is a nice touch. This is a really well made hair mod for your collection. Number 9 is our race mod of the month, that is the really cool Ghastly Ghouls mod. I don't normally use undead assets or make undead characters, but once I found this mod, everything changed. The mod introduces playable undead races, it comes with 4 playable sub races like Lich, Ghouls, the White, and the Mummy. It starts you off as being part of the undead race and is classified in the undead tag, meaning that healing spells won't be useful to you and you are vulnerable to turn undead. For more optimal roleplay, you get to select two origin races for dialogue purposes that you're able to trigger on certain interactions that is specific to that race. The mod also comes with its own very own race passive that is available across all sub-races, like the undead resistance that grants immunity to poison, resistance to necrotic, and the vulnerability to radiant damage. Other interesting stuff is decayed constitution that heals you when you get poison instead of damage. What set this mod apart from other race mod is the distinct gameplay that affects your overall dynamics. Like the Lich has its own unique phylactery system that enables it to conjure weapons that start off with just elemental resistance and increases its effectivity into full-blown spells. The ghouls can consume the dead to heal themselves, so you can finally have a use for those bones and dead bodies that you've been carrying around, while the white uses the mark of death to increase its damage capabilities. As for the mummy, it has the canopic ritual that removes its organs to gain different buffs to provide flexibility for your battles. To be honest, this mod is one of the most complete undead mod pack that I've covered recently, so I really recommend checking this one out. Number 8 is our visual mod of the month and another banger from the Vivid Landscape series. This time, we will be remaking the water assets. The mod reworks the bland and ordinary looking water from the vanilla version and introducing more water-like qualities such as waves, wind movement, whitewashing around objects like rocks and vegetation, etc. Even though the vanilla version quality is already great, the mod aims to enhance this some more by adding more realism. Here is a quick look on the difference.
ever wanted to see the game through Tab's eyes? Want to marvel the beautiful world Larian design and walk around in first person? Now you can with our 7th mod of the month which is the fake first person tweak. The mod doesn't actually give you first person view but it's close enough. Combine this with whatever reshade that you have then you'll really appreciate the beauty of your work. I haven't used a reshade for this showcase and it already looks very impressive. Have a look. Psychotter's Goth Dice is our number 6th mod of the month. It introduces a selection of dark dice for your color customization needs. You can select from silver-like metallic dice or the dark metallic version. The mod has infinite uses for the mod by the way so you can go full on gothic as much as you want. Here is a quick showcase on how the mod looks. On the right is the dark metallic dice while on the left is the silver metallic dice. Enjoy. Number 5 is our first armor mod of the month and we've got a lot of armor mods to choose from for this month specifically so it was really hard to select the best ones to be included in the list. I decided the criteria would be more of a thematic look of the design as one of the factors while including my overall biases to basically disregard any criteria. So here's the ballast armor mod. We've been talking about undead and necromancy earlier so in order to fit that dark and edgy vibe this mod adds dark and gothic themed armors and clothes for your murder cultist look the mod aims to rework that bland look from the original and replaces it with something more of a dark cultist look complete with its own passives while having some really cool features such as removable mask hoods crown of thorns while also being compatible for long haired characters. Here is a quick showcase on how it looks. Number 4 will be an overhaul to the worst race of the game which is really appreciated. I'm talking about the Dragonborn Reborn mod. The mod aims to improve the abilities and race features of the Dragonborn race. While being a fan personally, looking like a badass dragon and having command over the elemental ancestry you spawn from while using your elemental breath in order to decimate your enemies is a great concept. But unfortunately, dragon boards are easily the worst of the bunch due to the reason that they only have one race feature such as elemental breath. The elemental breath isn't even useful, so we will be fixing that by introducing a new subrace feature fitting for that elemental and metallic ancestry. Elemental dragons get the elemental dragon skin that provides plus one to your AC on top of the elemental resistance and breath. Metallic dragons get the metallic durability which reduces incoming physical damage and around level 5 it will also apply to magical damage. 
What's really cool is that if you combine this with Fistbane's Treasury of Dragons, we will be able to add gem dragons for our playable sub races. The gem dragons are based on other damage sources that the game didn't cover, like Psychic, Necrotic, Radiant, Force, and Thunder. They also have a really cool breath attack that cost a breath weapon charges. Having these two mods in your loading order will ensure that your Dragonborn won't be the worst race in the game finally. Now, for second armor mod of the month, as I mentioned earlier, Dark and Edgy is this month's theme. This will be our number 3 mod that adds new necromancy themed armors and clothes for your elegant and decay needs. This mod will cover all of your clothing needs for your undying character. You'll finally be able to finish that Dark Princess look by adding in this amazing set of assets. Here's a quick showcase, enjoy! Number 2 is our class mod of the month and is totally deserving of the spot just because of its unique playstyle and was also inspired by a sexy concept. Inspired from the succubus lore, in our favorite succubus Albedo from Overlord, this mod brings new dynamics and meaning to the phrase have you been satisfied by power and introduces two new sub races that focuses on active supporting which is a totally unique playstyle in Baldur's Gate 3. One of the subclasses is a nightmare which fights using its alarming charm and overwhelming sexiness as its main weapon. We get to play around new resources such as the discipline in order to spread desire values to as many targets as possible. Desire is a stack debuff which if it exceeds the maximum HP of our enemies it will cause them to a controllably climax. Once the climax status happens, you can basically suck them dry of their HP which will normally one shot enemies including bosses. Some really cool stuff of the nightmare are 3 charm patterns which you will be unlocking at level 4 that basically changes the dynamics on how your spell works. While the nightmare likes to turn your enemies to slaves, queen is opposite because she likes to turn your allies to slaves. It is an active support as well that focuses on buffing your allies to insane heights like providing extra attack, advantages to attack rolls, advantages to your AC, additional damage, etc. Some other notable stuff that you can unlock at level 8 is this insane indulge in desire that basically triggers a really wide AoE to potentially turn your enemies into allies. I almost forgot to mention the Spider Queen has the ability to turn into the Spider Queen Matriarch when your discipline values drop below 30. I suggest you checking out the mod page which I can't show in this video in order for you to get more information on how the spell works. Finally our number one mod of the month which is the additional enemies extended mod. We don't usually get mods that provide combat encounters as a bride as often so having mods like this is an amazing find. If you guys don't know, Additional Enemies was a mod that I covered months ago which basically adds new combat encounters across the map. It is a great mod to have if you want to get that fresh challenge. Unfortunately, the mod was no longer supported until now. We now have a new challenger to take up the mantle and continue working on this amazing mod. 
The mod adds new encounters across Act 1 and Act 2 for you to challenge and test out your builds. The goal is to create fix and balance encounters in the game. What sets this mod apart from the original is the new encounters that sometimes try to ambush you in certain locations that may catch you off guard. And a quick warning, you'll need a great and optimized team to finally take on the crush while you travel to the mountain pass. Let's just say you'll be fighting two big fiery boys, so good luck. And that's it guys, thank you for watching the top 10 mods of the month. Once again, on behalf of the Mnemonic community, thank you for downloading the mods and supporting the amazing work and the talent of our mod authors. Really curious to know what you guys think of the mods, or are you guys using the mods already? Would love to know all about it in the comments down below, as well as your questions and clarifications. Don't forget to hit that like button if you guys like the video. Shout out to all the people, subscribe and keep supporting the channel. I really appreciate you guys for all the amazing support and for all the people who have subscribed yet thank you for watching my videos and i hope i earn your subscriptions in the future but if i earn it today please don't hesitate to hit that subscribe button it really helps me out a ton if you want to support me directly please consider joining our d20 rollers club by hitting the join button or maybe patreon like the other guys on this list thank you so much for supporting the show finally that's it for me i'll see you soon on the next master box show peace out bye guys